Hi, we're here at the Makeup Barn today. We're going to do another video. Uh, this time it's on thread cutting on the lathe. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot of thread cutting videos on YouTube, I realize that. But uh, this one is going to be specifically uh, really for the members of the Maker Barn and the kind of equipment we use, which is uh, basically it's a Grizzly 4003 uh, 12 by 30, 36 inch gearhead lathe. Uh, so anyway, uh, this, uh, this video is geared more toward the amateur uh, hobbyist type machinists. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're making uh, parts for nuclear power plants or spacecraft, well, this is probably a new video for you. <laughs> but uh, anyway, well, let's, let's get going. And uh, what, one of the things that I see missing from a lot of these, uh, these videos is information about what a thread is really all about. And uh, what we need to do is, uh, you know, we've got a, in this case, a simple nut and bolt. And, uh, but how are these measurements really made? How do we determine the depth of this? And uh, if we look on, the, on this chart, I just put one up here on the board, uh, print it out. Uh, we'll see that there's a, a major diameter of our part. We're, what we're going to make today is a, a piece that has a 3 8 16 thread. In other words, 3 8 of an inch in diameter, 16 threads per inch. So this would be threads per inch. The, the pitch of the thread, that's the distance between the threads, is the inverse of the, of the threads per inch. In other words, it would be, in this case, uh, 16 threads per inch would be 1 16th of an inch between these, or 0 0.062 inches. Um, the, the tricky thing is, is the root and the crest of the thread are not particularly critical. In fact, if you look in the machinery's handbook, uh, this is kind of our, our Bible for, for all this sort of thing, is the mach machinery's handbook. And um, it would, um, it, it's got a rather complex section on uh, threads and all that. This, this, this diagram is a little simpler, but uh, uh, we really can't measure the crest and the root because, like I say, they're variable. They, can, they, can, they have a wide range of... Uh, of, of dimensions you can have there and still be within spec. But what we have instead is what we call a pitch diameter. And the pitch diameter is this imaginary line uh, coming along here, which is the halfway point, uh, where the point at w where the, 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 the groove and the, um, I don't know, the thread itself are actually the same diameter. In other words, this is the point, this line goes through the point where this is the same, same dimension as this. And then it's on both sides. So the, that's the pitch diameter. Because this surface, these surfaces here are, are really the mating surfaces on threads. Nothing to do with the top and bottom so much. They're, they, you know, they are important to some degree. So the question is, is how do you measure this thing? This is actually an imaginary line and... Um, you know, how can we do, go about measuring something like that on a, on a piece like this? Or, you know, of course, we can get very small uh, threads. So there's a, several ways of doing it. Uh, I recommend that you go to Joe Pye's uh, video. Joe Pye has a, that's short for, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Joe, I can't pronounce your last name right now. But, but anyway, uh, uh, he does a great thing on thread measurement and how to use thread uh, wires and, and, and uh, let me show you these are thread wires and um, they come with a little chart and as you can see there's quite a few different wires all the all each wire comes as a set of three now unfortunately this this set of thread wires lost all the writing so these vary in, in diameter and uh, unfortunately with the kit the set that we have here at the maker barn we'll have to actually measure those each time but if I was going to do, I'm looking on this uh, thread chart, for instance, um, and uh, if I wanted uh, 16 threads, I'd have a 40 thousandths. I'd look for a 40 thousandths wire, which might be something like around like this. So there's three wires, and the way they're placed is uh, we'd place one wire here. As you can see, it comes up above the crest of the thread, and uh, we, we place two more wires down in this area. And then we would make a micrometer um, measurement across here. I'll just come out here and, 
and that's where we'd make our measurement. And then we refer to a little chart in here, and that will allow us to su subtract the proper number from this measurement to get the actual pitch diameter. And we can get it very close. I mean, within a thousandth of an inch, certainly uh, no problem. Uh, the, the big problem, of course, is holding these things. And so that's kind of tricky because you've got three thread wires. You've got to put two on one side, one on the other side, hold them on, a, on the thing, operate a micrometer, and just really hope you don't drop these in the chip pan. When I use these things, I'll, I'll put a piece of paper towel over the lathe bed. If I do drop them, they'll fall into the paper towel and I can recover them. But these little wires, as you can imagine, if you have many chips down there, uh, they, can, <laughs> they can be a trick to find. Anyway, uh, there's other measures, other methods. Um, I should have brought a micrometer up here. Uh, these are our thread triangles. And uh, they have got a little, I guess you could call this a stirrup. And one of these stirrup clips over the, the, the uh, anvil of the micrometer. The other stirrup clips over the, the spindle. And you would bring these angles into the thread and it's okay if they're offset a little bit from each other because they're wide enough you can, with a micrometer, you can still uh, uh, get on them okay. And then you, uh, then you make the measurement and it, it comes with a big old chart and you just subtract uh, that number on a chart from the, from the number you read and, and you'll get the, um, the pitch diameter. In fact, actually, I think um, it goes, yeah, it goes direct. But anyway, uh, these are pretty nice, but they are not, in my opinion, not really any easier to use than the thread wires because micrometer spindles turn. <laughs> if you have a micrometer with a, a, a non-turning type of a spindle, I mean, a spindle, uh, that'd be nice, but uh, most micrometer spindles turn as you turn the micrometer and consequently you end up with this stuck in a groove and this thing going like this and trying to bring them around and it's, it's not easy at all. Um, probably the easiest way to get a really good precise measurement is to use this device here. This is a, a thread micrometer and um, it's specifically, it's, it, all it's used for is measuring threads and um, well one thing I need to say about the, the thread wires, they'll work for either 60 degree threads or 55 degree threads. And we don't run them across 55 degree very often here in the United States, but they were used in Whitworth threads, used in British Association threads that model makers use. And uh, if you're a gun guy, uh, the, uh, uh, the threads in a Mauser action, the old Mauser action were uh, 55 degrees. So if you wanted to thread a barrel to fit a Mauser action, you'd have to be able to cut those 55 degree. And you can measure those with thread wires. The triangles, no, you can't measure 55. And also this device is not made for 55 threads. But anyway, uh, it comes with five sets of uh, anvils and, and spindles, little deals that plug in here. You go through a little calibration procedure, and then you can put this on and measure directly the, um, the pitch diameter. So it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty nice tool. And these aren't terrible expensive if you get the import. I think uh, this one came through Amazon, but I think Shire sells them. They're 50 to $70, I think, something around here. I've had this for a while, so. But we, now we don't have one of these at the Maker, at the Maker Barn. Um, you'll have to get your own, I think. They're kind of delicate. If somebody dropped one, it would be all over. So, you know, that's, that's why we do that. Now, another, another thing that you can do is uh, this is a just a, a thread chasing die, just a, a thread cutting die. And um, you could say uh, machine single point with your single point tool on lathe, cut maybe about 80% depth of thread. So you have a good guide and then go ahead and thread it with the, uh, uh, with the uh, die. And some of these dies are actually adjustable. This one is not, but some have a little slit in there and a little screw to adjust them so you can get very precise work. So it's not a bad solution. It's it's you know, it's uh, it certainly is an easy way to go to get a, a, a quick thread, uh, but uh, you've got to be a little careful because you can wobble this as you go on, and it will make a strange thread. And of course, the other way is just simply uh, gauge your thread with a with a hardware store nut or whatever it is that you're going to screw the thread into. Which uh, if it's a one-on-one -on -one type of thing, if you're making a a, 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 a an arbor to fit a particular nut, you know, a threaded thing to fit a particular nut or whatever, that's fine. And that's pretty easy to do. The only problem is, is that 
all you've got is, okay, it won't go, so I take more, it won't go, don't, so I take some more, all of a sudden, wow, <laughs> it's, too, it's too loose. So it's a little, little tricky. If you can't make a measurement, uh, then you can get in, in trouble with that. But um, let's see, uh, got a couple, if, now if we actually get into cutting threads, I've got a, 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 a chart here that we keep downstairs and uh, it's called the depth and double depth of na national form threads. And uh, it's, it's a nice chart. It goes from uh, four threads all the way up to 96. Uh, it, uh, on, on the one side you'll see the threads per inch, then you'll see the pitch inches, which is the pitch of the thread. In other words, if it's uh, 16 threads per inch, that'd be 1 16th of an inch. It, it shows the cross feed movement uh, for, uh, for the national form. The national form tools are tools, you see them more in a professional environment uh, where you have a tool of threaded, uh, a carbide insert, whatever, that's designed to operate at 16 threads per inch or 24 threads per inch or whatever you might have, but it, it has that national form uh, already ground into the thread, so you, you uh, will get a, a gauge perfect thread with one of those if you use it properly. But uh, what we'll be using is a V-form tool. And you can see here, if we went in straight in with a cross feed, uh, we would go um, uh, on, the, on the radius 0.047 or on the diameter 0.094. That's all this means is single depth is a radius measurement, double depth is a di diameter measurement. Some lathes, the cross feed is in radius, some are in diameter. Uh, my experience, most are in diameter. Um, and then the compound, we use the compound, and, and it's saying here it's 29 degrees, uh, 29 and a half is another common, uh, they're essentially the same. And um, now our lathe uh, is uh, zero degrees is parallel with the axis of the lathe. Most lathes, American lathes that these charts are set up for, uh, zero degrees is perpendicular to the axis of the lathe. So um, we actually set ours, our compound, and you'll see it when we get down there. We set our compound to say 60 and a half degrees or 61 degrees, something like that, because of that 90 degree offset that we have uh, due to the difference in the way that, uh, that uh, zero is set. Anyway, uh, so this shows the distance where we go. So uh, on this chart we go, uh, if we used a V-form tool, we'd go 54 thousandths. Now, that being said, I'll see if I can, I don't know if you can see this on the board or not, but uh, if, if our a V-form tool would come to a, a perfect point, right? And you would, you would touch off exactly on the surface of the workpiece that you're working on. Now, there's two things that work against us for that. Uh, this, this number here is, is more of a theoretical number because the truth is that there's no such thing, unless you've sharpened what yourself, uh, our tool is probably more like this. Uh, I'll, is, is, a, is really seems to be kind of a radius on the end. And uh, so we've got this much error, or we're going to move in in 30 degrees, we have this much error in the measurement. So what I'm saying here is that don't crank that compound in 54 thousandths for a 16 threads per inch. Uh, I would go in no more than about 40 thousandths and then take a measurement, use the thread wires or the the triangles or uh, however you want to do it because uh, that, that can get you. Now, you know, if you, if you come in here with your own tool and it's, it's got a sharper, you know, our, our tool is not, you know, it came free with a lathe, what can I say, you know. But um, uh, if you have a better, better point, I, I, I typically use inserts. Uh, I use the, what they call the AG60 type inserts, 60 degrees. Uh, there's, there's three forms out, but uh, we can talk about the inserts later on. It's a little more pointy, so I can get a little more accurate uh, on this. But anyway, this chart is a great helper uh, to get you going. And uh, also, I've got a, got a couple other charts here. Now, there's a couple other charts that are necessary. Of course, these are on the lathe. And what we'll need to do is set our threads per inch. And uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, but... Uh, uh, the threads per inch, uh, so I've got it highlighted here. We're going to 16 threads per inch, so we need to set the gearbox at C, which is in the center here, and one. There's eight positions on a, 
on the other handle. So we set it to C in one, and uh, that'll, that'll set up our, our feed. We, we set the lathe so that it will cut uh, threads, it drives a lead screw rather than the uh, feed screw. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is to consider is there's a device on a lathe called a threading dial. And the threading dial tells you where you're at on the lead screw relative to the spindle. Now it turns out with 16 threads per inch, it, we can do any. We can do any place on there, it's just fine. Now if we were running, uh, let's say 11 threads, for instance, we could only do one and three. If we were running 14 threads, we could only do it on a number. But this we can do it on a number or in between, so it's kind of neat. And it's a little easier to do that. But uh, this, this is out of the, uh, the, the Grizzly, service, uh, Grizzly operator manual and, and, as well as this. And this particular chart, the double depth, uh, depth and double depth of threads. I'll uh, I'll put a link on the on, on the website down here to, uh, to to a place where you can pick up this chart. Well, we have got one, this one laminated. We leave it down here near the lathe, so you can use that. But if you want it one at home? I'll uh, I'll give you a, a link. Uh, and uh, I guess that's about it for this theoretical stuff. Uh, I think we ought to just get down there and start uh, making some chips. Okay, there's a few things that I probably should have mentioned uh, before, and um, one was a class of threads. There's two basic classes of threads. Class A is like a bolt. Now, Joe has a good, uh, good way to remember this. The bolt, uh, the external threads like this, are exposed to air, so these are, type, are class A. A nut, for instance, is internal threads, and internal threads are, um, are class B, and they're inside of a bore. So this exposed to air, and this, these are inside of a bore. It's got a neat way of remembering it. Now, for each class, A and B, there are three fits, one, two, and three. A class one fit would be, um, well, like this hardware store type of, of uh, hardware you see. is just fairly loose fit. This is a galvanized piece here, so it's probably a little tighter than normal, but, but uh, yeah, they're generally a fairly loose fit. But that serves us well in, t in times when we need easy assembly. Uh, if you're having to put a nut over a rusty bolt or a rusty nut into a you know, new bolt and that sort of thing, it's nice to have that clearance. And it's quite strong. There's not a problem with that. Uh, class 2 is a little bit better. Uh, that would be found in uh, good quality hardware, say the, the uh, class 5 type hardware that you you might get the, the high strength hardware. Uh, it would probably be around a class two or so. Uh, and class three is, is that really good hardware, the, the sock head cap screws, that sort of thing. So uh, we're gonna shoot for a class two, and uh, this will be a class two A thread we're gonna cut. And what I did is I looked in the machinery handbook, and um, I'll, I'll show this to this camera up here. This is, um, the pitch diameter was uh, for class 2A would be 0.3331 to 3287. So I just took the average, and what we're going to shoot for is this 0.3309. That's the average. And of course, due to our chart, our chart says we go 54 thousandths on the compound, and uh, we go 81 thousandths double depth on the crossfeed. Now I'll show you why we're concerned about that. Anyway, uh, let's get going. First thing you want to do is check to make sure the lathe is set up properly. And uh, one of the things that you have to be concerned about is are these levers in the right place or do you need to, to move them? Uh, they're right now they're in, in C and they're in 1. I've already got them set up for 16 threads per inch. This is over here on this side which drives the lead screw. If I do this, for instance, we can see the lead screw moves. Uh, I've got it on the slowest speed. I may want to speed that up from time to time. but for the most part, uh, 70, 70 RPM is fine for this kind of operation. Uh, unfortunately, the next speed up is 200 RPM, which is, <laughs> that's a little too fast, I think. So um, it'd be nice to run about 140, but you know, 70 is what we'll do. We're not in a hurry. Uh, we want to make sure the compound is set properly. And I've got, looking over here, this is right at 60 degrees. That's probably all right. I might actually bump it over just a hair to be closer to that 29 and a half or 29. It's, it's 29 from this side, and so it's kind of, but I'm gonna bump it over just past the 60, so it's like 60 and a half. 
and tighten it down again. And then I want to make sure that the tool post is square with the lathe. And uh, to do that, I'm going to take, this is a boring bar. This is the outer side of this boring bar thing. So I'm putting it in backwards. is nice and flat and square with the tool post. So if I tighten up the tool post, tighten it into tool post first, and then loosen the tool post slightly so it can move. Then I'll bring it up against the face of the chuck. And I might need to kind of put it in neutral to do that. There we go. Just bring it up against the, the face of the chuck and let it set up there nice and tight. And then go and tighten this. Hold this like this and push like that. Don't, don't push against the lathe because you'll twist the whole thing. But this way, your forces are such that you're not have to uh, twist it out of calibration. So now we're nice and square. We know that. We see that's, that's, that's because we want our, our, our thread to be nice and square. We don't want it to look like a buttress thread. All right. Now the threading tool itself. This is the threading tool. I'm going to show uh, this threading tool is, um, as you can see, it's a little rounded here, see? So I'm not sure how much error this one has as far as from a V-tool. We just have to kind of uh, cut and see what we get. But uh, I'm going to mount that in place. It's already set on center, and I'm going to lock it down good. Back this off. I'm going to put it back in gear so I don't forget. Um, grab my material, some 3/8. This is just cold rolled 1018. Um, well, you know, it's not cheap, but it's not expensive either. You know, for for steels, it's uh, doesn't machine super well, <laughs> but it'll it'll do good enough for our uses. I'm sticking out probably about an inch or so. A lot of overhang for normal cutting, of course, but it's uh, you know we're kind of forced to do if we want to cut a thread. We don't want to crash the tool into the chuck. It we'll give us gives ourselves give ourselves a little break there. And uh, let's see. What I'm going to do is bring this up close, and then I'm going to set the zero on this on the cross feed with the handle down. And that might seem weird, but the reason is is that this this cross feed you can see see how it drops down. On e really easy. So I want to feed it in. Until I'm comfortable with it, and then set this dial to zero. It was real close here. All right. Now I'm going to uh, grab a, a magic marker. Hang on a second. Uh, you can use bluing, of course, but uh, magic markers <laughs> is so, so much less uh, mess if you have a little problem with it. Um, all right. So I'm going to start the lathe. I'm going to make this area, I'm going to blacken it with a magic marker. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> because I want to be able to pick up the point of that tool, I'm going to use the, the cross feed. This is set on zero. The cross feed is set on zero. I'm going to take the compound and move it till it just scratches. There we go. Just scratching. Now I'm going to hold this real careful and set this to zero. Now, my cross feed's at zero. I'm going to go ahead and hit the X, the zero out the X on the DRO. This will help me, help me make sure that I bring it back to the, to the real zero. Now I'm not off one turn or something on here. Okay, now I'm going to come over some distance. Uh, oh, about a half an inch, I guess, would be fine. I'll bring this back to zero, and then I'm going to, with, I'm just going to plunge cut in uh, the the uh, eighty one thousandths diameter using a cross feed, uh, and that will be for the relief cut at the end of the thread. So, you see this. Could use the compound as well, but. Now 
Now I'm going to move down a little bit, make it a little bit wider. Just a, just a hair. I'm going to zero this Y out. Just Y on our lathe is, is really X on most of these. Okay, so I'm going to back this out. And next step is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to, going to cut a little bevel on the front. And this will make our thread look a lot nicer, have a nice start for it. And if you do this now, it's much easier. If you do it later, if you cut the thread, it, it, it will tend to kind of mess up your thread. A little bit of cutting oil in here just to make it look nice. All right. So, now we start threading. I'm going to set this at zero. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is make a test pass just to make sure that we are, in fact, at 16 threads per inch. So I'm going to just take off maybe two thousandths. So I make a scratch pass, I guess you could call this. Um, too bad I don't have a camera over here on, on the threading dial. But uh, what I'll do is I'll wait for either any line to come up, either whether a number or a line, because our chart, the little chart for the threading chart is way down here. So we'll probably make a laminated printed version and put up here for you. But um, anyway, uh, when any line comes up, I'll, I'll engage it. Oop. Put a little pressure down and just click it in. This uh, half nut works beautifully. All right, there's our scratch. We can see it real easy on that magic marker. In the end, pop it out, pop this out, and back. There you go. So I'm going to clean that off with a chip brush. Stop this. I have a little thread measuring guide. You, you could actually, you know, like if you had a bolt that you knew about, you could use it. But we've got this little uh, thread gauge and uh, put it on there, and that looks perfect. The reason you do this is because somebody may have changed out a gear underneath here. And that will throw everything off. You can't trust these then. Okay, anyway, uh, we've got a thread to cut. So let's get with it. I'll bring this into zero again. I'll take about ten thousandths from on this first cut pass. A little bit of lubricant. And here we go. First passes take a very little amount of, of material, so you can go pretty deep pass. From now on, I'll probably just take five. I've got a lot of extension here. If I had a larger diameter uh, piece, I, w I might take a heavier cut on, the, on these others. But uh, since this is sticking out so far, I don't want it to flex. So we'll just have to be, this is probably where I should speed up the video. Okay, it's nice having that DRO up there. I, I can test my zero. All right. Well, I didn't advance the compound. We got talking in instead of watching what I was doing. Zero that. Another, we're up to 20 now. We're going to go up to about 40, I think. I think. We probably shouldn't go any deeper than that before we make a measurement. Thirty-five. We're at uh, twenty-five right now. Thirty. 
I'm used to working with older lathes, so I t tend to put a little back pressure on them because the older lathes that uh, are a little looser. This is nice, tight. Boy, it just snaps in there when you make a cut. And I'll go up to 40 and we'll see how it does. That's what I'm going to do is make two passes at 40. One, a cutting pass like we're going to make here. And then a, another, which is a... cleanup pass. This is generally where I crash the, the threads and ruin all the parts. Okay, so we'll just make a cleanup pass. It's good. It takes off, taking off very little. That means there's... I'm going to take one more. Just because I want a very as smooth a surface as possible. Yeah. Almost nothing came off. What happens when you're cutting threads quite often with it being unsupported on the on this end right, right here? is that this end can sometimes become become a larger diameter than what you want because it springs away. So these these spring passes, these uh, cleanup passes I'm making uh, can, can really help. Uh, next thing I want to do is, is uh, run a file over the threads and a, uh, a brush. I'll have to get those. All right, this is our lathe file. It's a fine, you know, straight cut file. And uh, when you use a file on a lathe, make sure you hold the file outside of the chuck, outside of the jaws. So there's no danger of the uh, end of the file catching on a chuck jaw. So I just put a little bit on there. Just want to take off the, what, what happens when you're cutting threads, it, it'll, it'll cause a burr to build up. That's, uh, and if you try measuring with that, you probably get uh, an error in your measurement. The uh, brush is nice. It helps clean it up and helps smooth it off as well. All right, let's see if this thing, let's see where we're at. Should be pretty close, I think. Okay, well, we were right there. It's uh, 0 0.33, <laughs> 0.3309. And is that what we wanted? Let me look back at my piece of paper here. Yeah, 0.3309. Well, that was lucky, wasn't it? But uh, I guess this, uh, we shouldn't have to do this, but I'll do it anyway. I'll, I'll see if this nut runs on there. Now, it's not saying we couldn't still have a burr or have the crest a little too high. But, um, no, that fits, that's beautiful. All right. First time. All right. Well, that's, that's all there is to it. <laughs> but, uh, I, was, I lucked out that time. Uh, it came right on. So, uh, just for reference sake, I made it that came out where I wanted to be 14 thousandths uh, less than what the what the uh, what the uh, chart says. So this particular lathe tool between between the tip of it and the theoretical point is about 14 thousandths of an inch. Well actually seven thousandths because we're talking about radius. Not much but it can make a big difference on threads. Anyway uh, that worked out pretty good, and uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. I hope it's helpful for uh, those Maker Barn guys who, uh, who want to start cutting some threads, and uh, also for other, others of you out here uh, 
who are cutting threads and especially on the Grizzly uh, 4003. Thanks a lot for watching.